Two Broke Rednecks present. So that's what they call surviving today's economy. When our founding fathers established this republic, but I thought we were a, a democracy. An economic system unique among nations. A system which has led the United States to the very pinnacle in wealth For some. and in world leadership. This series of programs is being presented to help all of us understand better our advantages under our American way of life. So listen up unless you're a damn dirty commie. Topic. Let's join now a group of young people at the National Education Program Workshop in Searcy, Arkansas. At the classroom young lecture, people, Dr. that guy's pushing Davis 40 Jr., in the second row. Hello, I'm Anderson Cooper. In order to have a proper appreciation of the American economic system, we must know how the national income is divided in America. Which is poorly. In other words, we must examine the distribution of the great wealth produced through the operation of American capitalism. And ask the question, the where are my pants? Or is the wealth of America concentrated in the hands of a few? as the socialists and communists say. Well, the communists got that one right. This is the question for our discussion today. The answer constitutes a tribute to our system. Which leads to the, the question, how do you knick-knack a paddy whack? Is widely distributed throughout our population, as we shall see. Well, is this Basically, film made about the Republicans? Must fulfill two social needs of the population which it serves. Which is liquor and tacos. First, an adequate production of goods. And second, he's about to make a two in the pink one of the stink joke. Of course, there are other measurements of value for an economic system. And in our previous classroom sessions, we have seen how well our own system measures up. I knew how I should have skipped this class. Of economic freedom and great incentives for our personal achievement, thus bringing about national progress. All of which are gone. We know that American capitalism is morally right because its chief elements, private ownership, of nudie bars. And the competitive market are wholesome and good. They are compatible with God's laws and the teachings of the Bible. So and our economy is based on Bible sales, no wonder it's in the toilet. The United States produces 42% of the wealth of the world. Which most we owe to China. 7% of the world's population and 6% of the land area. But enough to about that. Up, Let's talk about on slightly back me. Right. It provides economic freedom and great incentives for development. Like I helped and your wife develop a reputation for being the biggest system. hoe in town. This brings us to the central question, the question of distribution. We'll put underage kids Are on the street corner for that. Under American capitalism, being extended to American wage or salary earners, or would this big segment of the population be better off under socialism or communism? Who's the father of my wife's baby? Maury will tell us to answer to all these questions. From an socialist who visited America after Great Britain had experienced a socialist system for five years. Excuse Tell me, me which way to the bread line? To food in a place such as this. Well, this is just an ordinary food market. Most everybody in America shops at stores like this from time to time. I call bullshit. There's no screaming children and crying babies in here. Look at this, for instance. Competition and big volume keep prices down. You little brats say, better behave or it's the bell for you. Are you a capitalist? What'd you say? What I mean is, what is your work? I'm an actor like I'm you, stupid. Engineer. Utterly impossible. We all know that when this Another scene is over, they beat the guy. The question of America's distribution of wealth was given by a Russian communist who visited America. Hey, comrade, we want derby cars so we can exploit his secrets from Mother Russia. That cannot be. The sons of toil, they are chained to their capitalist machines. Chained they to their exploited. machines? That's going to get awful nothing, messy. Absolutely nothing under capitalism. The communist was amazed, of course. Expected like 15 minutes or less will save you money on car insurance. Do not have cars. A few of the lucky ones have bicycles. Then explain why so many have bicycles in China. English and European workers. Comparatively few own cars. In America, as we all know, there are more automobiles than families. With several families living out of them. Who will risk a guess as to the total amount of the national income during this amazing productive era in America? Not enough is my guess. 25 years. Yes? 
I would say it would be hundreds of billions. No, and we're almost Actually, stupid with that answer. Trillions. For the 25-year period just ended... Woman had a period for 25 years? No wonder she's cranky. Eighty billion dollars. Which is oddly enough how much we owe the Chinese. Right figure like that. He he, I made a funny. You may be wondering, who got all this money? Sam Walton's see children. see how this was distributed. Let's look at this graph. Which this houses this the office. total national income. To the employees of America, the wage earners and salaried people went the biggest amount. Bullshit. percent The self-employed, professional people and small business operators got the next share, nine and one half percent. That means doctors are poor. The who supplied food markets and our processing plants with the raw foodstuffs receive six and one half percent. And the finger from the government. Orders, the people who could save a little money and invest it in business and industry receive four percent. Again, bullshit. And you will remember that this amount was widely diffused since there are 18 million stockholders in America today. Most are CEOs. Their investments of their savings have built new factories. And paid for one heck of a kicker. And other equipment to make new jobs in industry. The corporations themselves receive seven and one half percent. There's so much bullshit in this film, I could fertilize a garden. After taxes, they retained only three and a fraction percent of the national income. If you're retaining income, the they got medication to help rent, get that receive off. four percent. And lastly, the bondholders, who provided the cash for new schools, new paving, home loans, and so forth, received three and one half percent. Until the city filed for bankruptcy. Now let's examine the distribution of wealth in another way. Let's examine the income by families. How cruel, making little people in stand in a line like we that. Statistics, there were approximately 50 million families in the United States. We didn't count singles and retirees they an because they don't approximately matter. $272 billion. That's a hell of a amount, though, for student loans. How was this income distributed among these families? Through paychecks, duh. Professor Gaines, aren't the majority of our families in the lower income brackets below $3,000 a year? No, and if you Not speak all, again, John. I'll hit you with a rolled up wet Nearly newspaper. 21 million families, or 40%, received an income oh of $3,000. Oh my three God, to he cut those poor little people in half. 15 million more families received an income of $6,000 or more. You tried to put These one back together, but the scar just won't heal. percent of the population. That leaves only these with an income of $3,000 or less. And we must shun them for Not being a be burden of society. A good sized group, 7%. Received incomes of ten thousand dollars or more, and a smaller percentage but only makes percent a buttload of money off the, the lower wage workers. And, above and from this bracket came the bigger portion of venture capital, our investment money, and the hiring the of illegals, plants and to start businesses, thus creating new jobs and, and sweatshops. In the lower brackets go these figures. Oh God, I wish he shut up. percent received incomes from two to three thousand dollars. Ten and eight tenths percent received from one to two thousand dollars, while five and seven tenths percent received less than one thousand dollars. That's the group we, we play in the stone. That in these lower brackets are many farm families whose cash incomes do not strictly reflect their standard of living. Which is even poorer. Mary, what can be learned from this graph? It seems that our national wealth is very widely distributed. I see she drank the Kool Aid. Yes, 85% of all income goes to 93% of the families. I'm not very good at math, but even I know that didn't make receive sense. the remaining 15%. Thus it can be seen that the great bulk of income goes to the majority of families in the middle income range. Which is why we have any credit card debt. That's how much we can get from them. Less than $3,000 a year. That's why my upper lip is brown from all the billionaire butt of kiss. $15,000 or more per year. In fact, if all the income left to those in the $15,000 or above bracket, after taxes are paid, were to be distributed evenly among the 160 million people in America, each of us would receive only 55 cents a day. You too can help a small and child if the in the income of all those who earn $25,000 or above were to be distributed evenly. Each of us would receive only 15 cents a day. That's the price to help needy income. kids when you're on a budget. So we wouldn't gain much by liquidating the upper income brackets about whom the socialists and communists rave so loudly. We get it, you're anti-communist, now move on. That incentives for achievement remain constant in the upper income level. 
as in all other brackets. Which is why we're so shipping your Americans jobs overseas. Benefits from the total brain power. Brain power? Have you looked at the clowns we keep nation. electing? There is one additional yardstick of our economic well-being in all walks of American life. Now that we have examined the distribution of national income, let's take a brief look at the ownership of property. Children of the, the corn, farms of America run! are owned by 25 million people. The houses of America, worth $230 billion, are owned by 113 million people. That's a lot of people in one house. automobiles are owned by nearly 40 million families. Oddly enough, most the of them glass the machinery dugger. that produce the material things of life have 18 million stockholders. Well, the bulk is in the in hands of its another, officers. More than 100 million of our people own the wealth of America. And the one percent are paying you well to say it. Children and youths will at some time in their lives own substantial wealth. So children and female sheep will become wealthy? About American capitalism's distribution of wealth and its great wealth production overshadow anything the communist and socialist have to show. Man, this dude's obsessed with commies. Under American capitalism makes Karl Marx the world's worst prophet. Well, seeing as Marx, Marx wasn't a prophet to begin with. Communism prophesied that under capitalism, wealth would be concentrated in the hands of fewer and fewer. Sadly, he's right. Have you heard of trickle-down economics? Would suffer increasing poverty. The fact oh my is God, Dad, American you're starting to sound like a commie. Has set a new standard for human welfare. And if we keep its basic principles strong and vigorous in the years ahead... Dude, we don't want to hear about your penis. Of every American for a still better living standard will certainly be enhanced. I'm still waiting on my and living standard to be enhanced. Socialism and communism will come out of their shadowy pipe dreams and join us in our march of human progress. As we head toward oblivion. At our next session, we will discuss the spirit of enterprise. The enterprise then, is haunting Kirk. Class dismissed. So what did we learn? This guy really hates commies. The American Adventure Series is a production of the National Education Program, Searcy, Arkansas. Dr. George S. Benson, director. Dr. Benson Dr. looks Clinton like that guy who comes on early in the mornings and teaches Bible this study. This is a continuing series based on the unique political and economic system which has made America great. Watch for the next presentation of the American Adventure. I'd rather not. Well, that bullshit's over. Dear Bark Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.